In four decades, it's safe to say Tim Gallego has covered all the angles. So when I asked him about the stories he enjoyed, he didn't disappoint. Well, it could, there's been so many of them for 40 years. Uh, I think it's always exciting when we first started out to cover our first uh, tribal elections. That was uh, way back in the 80s. and uh, it's, it's our first tr try ever at, at covering a, a political campaign for some of the candidates and and so uh, it kind of gave us a feel of how to ha handle uh, elections from then on and I think that was a good thing because elections are so important you know during the on the tribal uh, elections. He brought attention to Indian country stories that needed to be told and he did it because he knew journalism and freedom of the press is a constitutional right. I think a newspaper has a a responsibility if, if it's a minority paper to also be an advocate for its readers and uh, there was a time in the 1980s when we had heard rumors that the banks in the border towns like Shattern and Rushville and Martin were char charging higher interest rates to Native Americans so we did a, a story on it and the Justice Department came out after reading the story and they find all the banks and, and stop what they call redlining so that was a good thing that we did. Back in uh, 1989, I did an interview with Governor George Mickelson, and uh, he was kind of bothered by the relations that the state and the tribal governments had. And uh, I asked him, I said, well, what is your hardest part of your job as governor? He said, I'll tell you the same thing my father told me when he was a governor 40 years ago, tribal relations, Indians and whites. He said, I want to try to do something to, to improve on that. And it just so happened, it was 1989, and, and the coming year would be the 100th anniversary of the uh, uh, massacre at Wounded Knee. So I thought that would be a good catalyst to maybe start getting things done. Uh, maybe the legislator would be open to it. So we came up with the idea of a year of reconciliation for 1990 and doing away with Columbus Day and replacing it with Native American Day. And we did all this just by discussion and by writing. You know, we didn't hit protest, use any violence or anything else, but it got done. So we now have Native American Day. And I think we're still the only state in the Union that celebrates Native American Day as a holiday. One of the things that separates Gallego from the pack is his willingness to bring up painful issues like boarding schools to really make his readers think. He was a student at Holy Rosary and wrote often about that experience starting in the early years of the newspaper. Well, I think it, it kind of started early because one of the first things that uh, we started to do was look at the boarding schools. We're, you know, we, we wrote about the boarding schools 40 years ago and right now it's, it's all over the place because of the, the bodies they're finding up in Kamloops and Canada and and we've said all along that go to the, any of the schools like St. Francis, Holy Rosary, and you're going to find graves up there of kids that are buried in unmarked graves. And I, I wrote about uh, when uh, Bozo Richards died. He was 16 years old. And they assigned me and Roch Red Elk to dig his grave. We're, we're 14 or 15 years old, and we're up there digging a grave for one of our friends. And while I was in the grave swinging my pick, I hit something and I pulled it up and it was a little skull stuck on the end of my pick. So we had dug it into a ch child's grave. So, so those are the things that people try to keep quiet. You know, uh, peop I think the schools, the boarding schools, did so much damage to the Indian children. And we tried to talk about those things. We interviewed a lot of the students that were badly abused at these schools. and. Uh, some of them totally ruined their lives. A lot of them end up in prison. Some of them committed murders. Others became al alcoholics and drug addicts. So we saw generations of children, maybe three generations, that were impacted by the boarding schools. And uh, no one was covering that except us back then. Gallego mentored many writers, artists, and reporters, and along the way they won hundreds of awards for journalism. I remember one day I was in, at work and a big, this big old heavyset guy walked in and introduced himself and said, I'm Paiute from Nevada. 
He said, and, and I really like your paper and I'd like to go to work for you. And his name was Adrian Lewis. And so Adrian came in and was one of the really great writers, did great stories. In fact, I often talk about a column he did uh, where he was observing sheets hanging on clothesline outside of his window at his apartment. And he did a whole story on sheets that related to a lot of things that we never think about. You know, that's how great a writer he was. He eventually became my managing editor and uh, uh, he passed away. And one of the guys now that's being uh, considered for a Pulitzer, uh, M Marty Tubles, he came into my office in 1988, uh, him and his wife, and I hired them both. Put her in the business office and I put him in the production department uh, assembling ads. And uh, one day I did an editorial and I took it to him. I said, see if you can do a cartoon to this because he, he had a good hand in art. So he did a, car, uh, a cartoon for the editorial. And from then on, he, every week I'd give him my editorial and he'd do the cartoons for it. So he got his start doing cartoons. So he was another one. And uh, Tom Littleman was another great artist that we had. And I, I wish that we could assemble all the cartoons he did for us over the years and put them into a book. But uh, he passed away also. But uh, I just has, I have some really pr people I'm proud of that uh, we worked for me at the early days when you really needed, really needed good minds. At the 2019 conference of the Native American Journalists Association, an organization he helped found, Tim was able to meet some of the next generation of Indian Country Today, nearly 40 years after he founded the paper. Tim celebrated his 87th birthday recently, and he says he's finally ready to retire. He wants to write another book for the next chapter of his life. His legacy will live on through the many folks he mentored. In Rapid City, South Dakota, Shirley Snavy, Indian Country Today.